Hey guys, Scott here. Today I want to talk about 2v8 in Dead by Daylight and how uh, we can attempt to fix the biggest issue with it, which is by far the queue times. The queue times are utterly abysmal for killer, and this is not just like a little minor inconvenience. It's essentially ruining the entire mode to the point where it's like actually a detriment to the gameplay of the mode itself because the queue times are often three times longer than the actual match that you play. So you're spending most of your time doing nothing. That is just simply too big of a problem to ignore. Now, the last time we had 2v8, I made a video about how the mode was so successful and, you know, pretty well received. And it was so popular that even queue times in the regular game mode were screwed up. We never had this with Chaos Shuffle with any other alternative game mode. It was just 2v8 that screwed everything up. And that seems to be happening yet again. Now, the thing is, we need to find out what exactly is causing this to happen because I don't really think it's an issue of like balance or anything like that because if it's people wanting to pick you know the easier side to win I firmly believe solo survivor here is actually stronger than like solo killer here um Zubat and I were playing killer for you know quite a while and we were winning but just barely and we have like 15,000 hours between us and we were getting down to one or zero gens like almost every game and, you know, getting like six kills like a, a, on average. It was not easy at all. And again, we're very experienced killers. I can't imagine what the average player is like. I have to imagine survivors are kind of beating killers asses most of the time anyway. When I was playing solo, I was finding that to be the case as well. But regardless, I, I do think it's not an issue of balance because killer in this mode is pretty hard and as survivors get more and more comfortable with their new class abilities and stuff they kind of come out on top overall in terms of strength compared to killers at least in my opinion so i don't think it's an issue that survivor is too weak or anything and that's why no one's playing it i uh, it's really the novelty the novelty is the main reason that people will endure the game being harder for themselves and also the queue times being miserable they will endure that because playing killer is just simply a new thing so that's the main draw to the mode it's the novelty of it now an interesting thing to think about this is that is a problem that over time would fix itself because as it's in the game longer and longer it's no longer a novel thing to play with your friends after a few months it's just hey let's just go play the you know kill with your friends mode it's not a new shiny exciting thing anymore and so there the queue times would start to balance themselves out again because like i said it's not a shiny new thing anymore but the problem is if we have it in the, in the game for months we're in this scenario where we have absolutely destroyed queues for months so not only do we need a long-term realization that that would fix it over time but we need a short-term band-aid to make that process less painful and there's a couple of options people have selected um the first one that i think you could do People are not finding um, blood points to be a worthy currency. You can give people a million blood points in game. They're probably still not going to want to do it more than killers want to do it. So in that scenario, I think we could transition to iridescent shard giveaways. Now, this is not necessarily something like Oryx sells, which will let them buy, you know, uh, licensed content that might have a problem with, you know, licensors and getting their stuff for technically free over time. Iridescent shards are a DBD specific currency that are much harder to get than blood points. And I do think that there would be much more incentive, even if it was a small bonus per match, it would be a much bigger incentive for survivors if they were to do that. I still don't know where that blind came from. Um, but that is one possible solution. There's another solution a lot of people have suggested that if you play a survivor mode or if you play a, uh, a killer mode, then the opposite role for you next time, you have sort of a priority queue or something like that. So if you play a game of survivor, you have a twice as fast killer queue or something like that because you're in a, a priority queue for people that are, you know, trying to play both roles and divvy up the player base properly. Now, there's a couple of caveats with that. It might not work and also... That would require a fundamental, like, architecture framework change to DBD and how matchmaking works. You would have to introduce the, this, you know, the concept of a priority system there, which doesn't really exist. Now, there have been rumors of things like whitelists for certain fog whispers and things like that for um, dealing with, you know, cheaters and stuff like that. So you can disconnect without penalty. That's happened in the past, like, a few times a little bit, but that's not at all the same thing as having a priority system for every type of player that can play one type and get a boost in the queue of a different type. So 
fundamentally, that's, you know, a cool idea. I just don't know if they have it in them to change the framework of the game so drastically like that. So that would be a definitely a possible solution. But I think iridescent charge or something like that it would be something easier and again the important point to focus on here is these are just band-aids they're just things to make the initial process much less painful as the novelty wears off because if we keep taking it away and it only comes back every you know it comes back twice a year it's always going to be a novel experience and if it's always a novel experience then people are always going to want to do the novel experience because they'll do anything to get away from the monotony of the standard gameplay loop of DVD after playing it for a while. So we're in this sort of conundrum where you have to keep it to fix it. But if we keep it, cues are fucked for a long time. And again, I say this as a streamer, it is it is ruining my stream. I literally sit in queue for 20 minutes before I can play a single game. So I'm not even streaming DVD anymore. I've been streaming Tears of the Kingdom with just a DVD occasionally every, you know, for five minutes every hour. Like... It's detrimental to me, too. It's very, very bad for streamers. At least when you're not streaming it, you can just queue up, minimize, go do something else for a while, go jerk off, do whatever you want. But, you know, I have to sit there and just try to entertain people while nothing is happening for 20 minutes, and that sucks. So then I sort of get relegated to playing Survivor, and um, that is probably better for the overall queues, you know, for everybody else. But it doesn't change the fact that whenever I do try to go to play Killer, then, yeah, my queues are 20 minutes again, so... That's the thing. We need a long-term solution, which comes from removing the novelty, which comes from keeping it as a, a permanent mode or keeping it for a much longer time. That is the that is the key thing to fixing it. It needs to lose its novelty. So playing with a killer friend is no longer a shiny new thing. At the same time, we need a band-aid to fix the short term so cues aren't utterly miserable for everybody while this transition period happens. And again, there's a couple of solutions there. Curious to hear what you guys think. What are some options you have? I'm sure Behavior would love to hear it too. I saw Eric Pope on Twitter just asking, what the hell do we do to fix this? Because it is a complicated problem to fix. It is literally suffering from success. So I completely understand why they're having so much trouble fixing this type of queue issue. But um, I don't really know what the correct solution is here is. But... That is the biggest issue. The biggest issue with the mode is not the balance of it. The balance is all over the place, but who cares? It's chaotic, stupid fun. I don't really care about that. I just want to play it. I just want to be able to do the mode to begin with. And if people aren't able to do that, that will always be at the forefront of big problems with it. So um, that's it. I'm curious to hear if you guys have any suggestions. I'm sure Behavior would love them as well. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.